Do you have goals you want to accomplish but have a hard time staying motivated and accomplishing those goals? In this video, we're going to show you a way to stay motivated. For the best business tips for entrepreneurs, and those aspiring to be entrepreneurs, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a video every Tuesday and Saturday. These tips have helped many entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs be successful in their business. Now, it's your turn. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, today we're being joined by Mr. Jonathan Slaughter. Jonathan, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm well, I'm very well. Jonathan is one of the founders of SI Consulting, and I invited him to talk with us today in regards to why to visualize goals, why that's important. But first, I'll give Jonathan, you, I'll give you a second to introduce yourself to everyone. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Adrian. So my name is Thomas Slaughter, but obviously those who are very close to me get the privilege to call me Jonathan. Um, <laughs> and that's just because my father's named Thomas Slaughter as well. And um I chose my middle name for those who are close to me, so it's no confusion. But to any point, um, yeah, so about two years ago, I started my company at SICG, was a strategic, strategic intent consulting group. Um, and some folks call it SI Consultant, so it just figures how, however you can say it, super easy. But the point is, uh, we've done phenomenally well. So we actually, next month, we'll be our second year. Oh, um, congratulations. Well, thank you. And I actually started the company the day my daughter graduated from high school same day. That's when I actually quit my job and decided to become full-time consultant. And uh, we have evolved to several consultants in the firm. And what does my firm do? We're actually a IT services and cybersecurity company. And our whole ideal is using technology through innovation to help companies basically improve their overall performance by managing their technology to make things easier as far as the customer experience or the employee experience. So what does that all, you know, it's a bunch of da da da, da whatever, junk, 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 it sounds nice. But simply to the core, what we do is we help companies run their IT. So some of our clients include the National Security Agency of the U.S. government, the uh, VA, the Veteran Affairs Union of the U.S. government, as well as small businesses. So uh, the mom and pop, maybe dental office with a couple employees, maybe doing a five million a year, where we'll do maybe cybersecurity assessments for them for HIPAA, or we'll manage their servers, or we'll maybe um, implement VoIP phone systems for them. Um, and just all you can think of it, I always say, anything from the ground to the cloud, think of us, and that's what we do. Right. I bet you're very busy right now, seeing that everybody is working from home and um, you know, technology is our friend at this moment. Oh, yeah, it's, it's definitely our friend at this moment, but it's been my best friend for the last 15 years. So I've had a great progressive career um, in the technology field. And it's funny, I never saw myself to be a geek. Um, I, that, I, I never expected to be that, that person. <laughs> but it just all worked out very well for myself. And I've actually prevailed and done very well in the technology space. Excellent. Excellent. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. So, you know, like you said, you started your business a couple of years ago. Um, I'm sure you didn't just think about it and it happened, right? You had to plan your goals and figure yep. out and take actions and steps to, to bring it to fruition. Absolutely. You're 100% correct. I actually incorporated my company, I believe it was August 2015. And um, I didn't actually make the move to go full time into my company until... Um, June, I was in May 2018. So, okay. and it, it was, it was about three years of planning and it was three years of setting goals and, you know, basically hitting certain, um, marks. Milestones. Yeah. Yeah. Milestones before I felt comfortable enough to make that transition. So, cause it's not easy to walk away from a six figure job to right. get to making zero dollars and you figure out how do I make this money back as quick as I can. So that's not an easy thing. Scary thing. Awesome. So, I'm going to assume that you really thought about your goals and you visualized what it was that you wanted, what success looked like to you. Almost certainly. Um, absolutely. So um, my wife, she probably, she, she could tell you all my goals, like, like she could probably read, you know, a menu or whatever the case is at a restaurant. She just, just, she just knows them because um, every year we actually have a planning meeting, my wife and I, and we sit down 
if it's January, it's typically January or maybe um, late December, depends what was happening at that time. And we review our goals for the next 12 months, all the way to the next five years. And, and you know, think of it like this, when you do set your goals, don't think of it as just that set in stone. Think of it more as a roadmap. And sometimes things do happen within, you know, the, you, you on that roadmap and you on that journey that causes you to go left or right because nothing's perfect. Right. However, the fact that you have the goals set, you can make adjustments to hit those goals. If it's not at the deadline you set for it, maybe it's down the road, but the fact that you have it mapped out helps a lot. Right, right. That definitely, it, it's, it goals help you along the journey, the path to success. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's really smart on, on the part of you and your wife. Um, so why do you think people struggle so difficultly with, with goals, accomplishing goals? Why do people struggle with that? Um, I'll tell you, I kind of tell a, a little story and I, you you'll probably get tired of me saying telling stories, but uh, that's the best way I can do. I can give parables. <laughs> that, that's just kind of how I roll. So to any point, um, I remember I was sitting in a, a sales meeting high X years ago. And I remember it was not something, but it was a, a week sales training. And I remember the guy came and the first thing he told us that you're going to fail unless you have goals set. And you can't just pick goals out of thin air just because you know you want a ferrari that's not good enough right you have, to, you have to have what we call personal currency meaning that you what does that really mean to you that ferrari you know is it is it more of a wish or a desire and mm -hmm. a lot of us we set goals based on our wishes and not our desires and that's why we fail because we are just grabbing stuff out of air, out thin air, whatever the case is, whatever goals there, whatever we think, whatever's the hottest thing, whatever Miss Jones down the street has or that house you just drove by, but it's not truly a desire. Yeah. And you're setting yourself up for failure. Why? Is because we typically gravitate towards those things that we desire, not what we want. Mm -hmm. So why do we have a job? Because we desire to have money. That's right. Why is that? Dig deeper. It's because you need to have safety. The, the basic human, no, what basic human things was it was the theory that we have to have shelter, uh, protection, all those things. So yeah. within yourself and ask yourself, what is that personal currency? All right. What is that thing that drives you, that motivates you? Then build your goals around that. Okay, nice, nice. Yes. It's it's definitely a, a difference between wants and desires, right? Oh, I could tell people all the time. And, you know, I, I'll sit there and I could ask 50 million people, hey, you know, what do you want? Oh, I want a, you know, a, a Lamborghini and a yacht and a helicopter and yada, 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 whatever the case is. Oh, that's great. What do you desire? And they get confused. Yeah. And they, they, can't, they, they can't differentiate the two. Well, you have to be able to split the two and say, this is why I desire. What you desire is something that you will go, you'll, you'll go to the grave trying to obtain. Right, right. Yeah, so uh, I know a lot of people that I have come in contact with is, it, much like you, they worked a nine to five, right? They worked that corporate job, that, that six-figure income, you know, opportunity that they have at work. And for whatever reason, they had a paradigm shift and yep. realized that they wanted to put all that energy into something that could help leave a legacy for them, right? Absolutely. And, and, that, and that's a big desire that a lot of people have. Exactly. And it becomes, a, a it's almost like I said, I call it a personal currency. You right. know, what basically, how do you pay yourself? What makes you happy? What gives you the happiest? And it's, it's funny. You're, you're right about that. I, I remember, hey, I wanted a six-figure salary, but I didn't desire I desired to be an entrepreneur. I desired to have my independence and my freedom. And I desired to build a business to help the clients the way I wanted. Right. All right. And as a result of that, I had to make that, I had a paradigm. I had a, you know, I called it a come to Jesus moment. Yeah. I don't know. And I'm sitting there in a the sales meeting Monday morning and I looked around and said, this is bullshit. <laughs> so that's what I said. I said, I'm not, this, I'm not happy here. Right. I'm not happy. It's just, I, I don't care about the money. As in, we, we, hear, we hear it all the time. What's that? Um, well, it's almost like the cliche, whatever the case is. When people say, 
But if you were to do anything and money's not an option or object or isn't you anything, what would you do? And that's what you should be doing. Yeah. Well, I put myself to that challenge. I said, okay, if I want to do anything, money's not an object, what would I do to be happy? And me is servicing my clients through my company, giving them the best service that I know I can and making money doing it. That's what makes me happy. That's nice. That's very nice. Yeah, I think that's a struggle for a lot of people to realize and differentiate the difference between what they want, what they think they want, right? Um, and the desire that actually drives them. So yes. I'm going to pause for a second and I'm going to turn to everyone that's listening and I'm going to ask you, what is the biggest struggle with accomplishing your goals? What is it that is causing you um, to not get to that end point of success? So if you'll take a moment and answer that question down in the card, uh, in the comments below, we greatly appreciate it. And don't be shy. You can't be shy. You know, you have to make sure you put the comments. <laughs> right? That come to Jesus meeting right now, right here in uh, YouTube in the comments. <laughs> Let's take off all the crap and everything else. That's, that's probably another problem people don't hit goals because they're so too damn busy worried about what other people are feeling and thinking about them. That, that is so true. I can, a long list of reasons, but I'll tell you, that's probably one of the top five in my mind. Oh, what am I dad, No, my dad's going to think? My mom's going, what am my spouse going to Who gives a shit? Who cares? Get after it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, you know, one of the things that I do, um, and I'm assuming that you do the same thing, is you, you, you understand what your goals are, what those desires are that you want to accomplish, and you put to it an image. What does it look like? You visualize what that image is. Why is visualizing uh, your goals so important? <laughs> what does it say? Is, uh, what's, what's the saying? That, that something uh, um, you can't, well, you probably, you know, and again, I use parables all the time. What, what's this, that you can't, of have what you can't see or something in that context yeah, yeah. like that I, I can't remember what the case is uh you know you can't hit what you can't see yes <laughs> that's what it is um so from football i played a little bit of football high school and i remember you know the coach would always get mad at players when they drop their head to hit somebody and they miss realize they missed that target oh that's a good point and hit what you can't see <laughs> you, you know you break down you look at the player and you look at their hips to see which way they're going to go well think of it from that perspective okay wow. is you have to have a clear, concise picture. Now, I'm going to say this again. A clear, concise picture yes. of what you want. And I'm going to take a little deeper. So, so hold on. Put on okay. your, oh, All right, let's put on the hats. So in graduate school, when I was getting my MBA, um, let me put the E in front of executive MBA. Anyways. <laughs> all right. I took um, a mindfulness class. And for those who don't know what mindfulness is, it, it, they call it actually, it's it called executive mind. That's what they called it. But it was just a mindfulness class at the end of the day. And our professor was one of the actual leading researchers in the whole world. He spent time in Japan and he was very ill and he was given so many months to die. I'm mean, not to die, but to live. And um, he went through these mental exercises and 10 years later, he's with us. Wow. And he said it was all in the mind. He was visualizing seeing himself dead, not alive. And he went through these mindfulness exercises where he cured himself through his mind. Bullshit you not. You know, and real, real, real story. I wish I, well, if you, if you, if you um, DM Adrian, I will actually get you the email, or not the email, get you the website to this particular professor. Because this is all he does is talks about this good stuff okay. to any point. All right. So our classes always started with mindfulness exercise. And it was visioning. So you sit there, right? First thing you do, you sit quiet. You listen to the, you know, the you you listen to what's happening around you. Then you silence out that noise. Then you put your feet on the ground and you anchor yourself. Then you imagine feeling yourself, you know, the peace in you. Feel feeling feeling going down to your body. What does it feel like in your core? Is it tense? Is it stressed? Okay, imagine releasing all that stuff. Okay, breathe. Now envision, just envision the things that you want. Just clear your mind, just envision it. And paint that picture. Can you see yourself? Can you taste it? Can you smell it? Can you feel it? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like?
when you find that image, you lock in on that image. Nice. And if you envision yourself sitting, okay, in that corporate office in the corner, looking out that window, then you got to do more than just see it. You got to feel it. You got to feel what that, what the, what your feet feel like on the ground, sitting on the plastic mat with the, with your, with your big corporate chair at that table. You got to think about what the sounds sound like. You know, people outside your door, the phone calls going, the typing, the people talking about the next deal. Okay. And then you have to just vision, what does it look like out of that window in that sixth story or sixth floor, or maybe the 82nd floor if you're in, in, in New York, or maybe the 56th floor if you're in LA. What does that feel like? When you feel it, you taste it, you see it, then you know what it is to live it. And you do not want to let go of that. And I do it every day. I imagine what it is to buy in that 8,000 square foot house, to listen to the water flow from the fountains. I vision, you know, driving the car that I want. But more importantly, I vision the happiness of my daughter, my son, my wife, because I had the guts to go get it to just hustle, to get after it. Right. And I had that vision in my, I, I, I lock onto it. And to your point, how important it is, it's the most important aspect because I guarantee you, if you can envision it, you can taste, you can see, you can believe it, you'll hit your goals. It won't be no procrastination. It won't be no bullshit. You're going to go after it. It won't be sitting there listening to naysayers. You have to have vision, clear, concise picture. Without that, it's just a dream. It's just a dream. I love it. I love it. So for uh, all of you that are listening, we'll add in the description below um, a link to um, what Jonathan was speaking about the professor um, at his school. So if you want to take a look at it a little bit deeper, you're more than welcome to do so. And, and just listening to the way that you were talking about it, Jonathan, at first I was like, oh, it's meditation, but it's so much more than meditation. Like you were talking about the fountains flowing and I was like, oh, I can hear them, right? <laughs> right? And that it makes a world of difference. I'm definitely going to uh, have to have to try and, and do that myself. You got to give it, a, I thought it was bullshit. I thought it was hocus pocus. I thought it was an easy A. I swear I did. And he made me a believer, you know? And the whole purpose of mindfulness is basically to bring you back into reality, line things up to put you in a position mentally till you go after and hit your goals. That's really what the truth is to remove that stress. And it was very interesting. I'll tell you what we did for our final. We had to go to downtown LA. And if anybody knows about how downtown LA is, it's, it's pretty busy. So we go to downtown LA and he has us go to like this outdoor, like food plaza, like, like in the hood, well, the garment district to be more specific. Sure. Like literally like thousands of people, all this noise and everything else. And he says, now, have at it. But I want you to use these exercises, excuse me, to quiet your mind and to envision your peace. Nice. And I was able to actually remove myself from thousands of conversations and actually zone everybody out and focus on my vision. And I was like, this is some real shit. And he says, once you learn how to do that, he said, you can do anything. And I believe it, you know, I drunk the Kool-Aid. Nice, nice. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. That's very impactful. I mean, if we didn't take anything else away from that, you know, having mindfulness to help you focus and visualize, I think that was the biggest key in, in our conversation today. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm always happy to give great information out. You know, we have to help each other level up. It's super important. Um, that's just, I'm, I'm a huge believer in karma and putting out good energy and all that good stuff. So um, people might think I'm a little bit of a weirdo because of that, but I, I don't think so. Um, I've, I've gotten it back tenfold already. Nice. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and having a brief conversation. I'll definitely have you back um, to talk about more topics in regards to entrepreneurs and business success. So thank you very much. Well, no, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me on. It's always fun. Take care, everyone. Well, I'd like to thank Jonathan for coming on and talking to us a little bit about visualizing our goals. He definitely shared a lot of tips with us to help us stay motivated to accomplish um, our goals and stay on that road to success for our business. I've also created a little cheat sheet 
with some links that uh, for additional ways to stay motivated to accomplish your goals. Um, if you are interested in that, please make sure that you download um, that document. The links are below in the description. Also, if you want to join a community of business professionals just like you, like-minded entrepreneurs, I've created um, a group called the Executive Lounge where we all get together, we network, we share tips with one another. Uh, please come join the Executive Lounge uh, by clicking again on that link down below. Well, I hope you check out my next video that's going to take this visualizing even a step further, um, how to visualize your goals using a vision board. If you like this video, please make sure that you hit the like button, you subscribe, and you share it with an entrepreneur or a friend who would find this beneficial. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll chat with you soon in the Executive Lounge.